All right, so just a friendly reminder, tomorrow you do have a vocab quiz, one through 10. Today we're gonna do the ear, tomorrow we're going to do the eye diagram. Um, I like sensation and perception, which is what we're in this week. I like sensation and perception one, I hate sensation and perception two, but we'll deal with that when we get there. So today in order to be successful, you need to have your ear diagram, you need to have color pencils or crayons, and you need to have, I would suggest a pen, because we have a lot of stuff. So, there's a lot going on. I really think this stuff's interesting, because while I'm telling you how you process auditory sound, you'll be hearing me using your auditory neural impulses. Isn't that cool? So the way you're hearing me right now, I'm going to teach you how it's happening. You don't think that's cool? I hate all of you. It's cool, whether you care or not. All right, here we go. So we're going to start with the outside of the ear, and this is called a pinna, P-I-N-N-A. Okay, and it's cartilage. It's cartilage, and it funnels sound. What is the common name for it? Hello? What the hell is that common? Lobe. It's your earlobe, people. Wow. We didn't know what it was called. What do you got, Kate? It's a pinna. It's cartilage, and it funnels sound. Guys, ask the person next to you. Okay, so your pinna, take, take your ears, hold your ears, okay? Your pinna is all it's doing is funneling in sound. So curl your ears forward and listen to how different my voice is. As I'm doing it, I want to change the tone of my voice, but I'm going to try not to because that would be strange and it wouldn't really work. And I'm now rambling. Now, so pull your pinna as high to the, as far forward as you possibly can. Now try pinning it back as far as you can and listen to the difference in the voice. Isn't that crazy? <sighs> Yes. Yes. Oh my yes. God, that's the responsibility of it. And that's why the angle of your pinna, now if you take it and you pull out your ears, listen to how different my voice is even now with that. And that's the responsibility of the pinna is trying to force those airwaves, which are now vibrating from the sound of my voice, into your, into your ear canal or your auditory canal, which is what we're going to call it. Your auditory canal is a fancy term that we're going to use. However, what do you call it? Ear, Ear canal. Oh, no, we haven't got to the drum yet. Okay? You can literally take your finger and stick it into your <laughs> ear canal or your auditory canal. I wouldn't suggest really getting in there, but that's it. It's exterior. Then we have this right here. It's called your tympanic membrane okay and what is the common name for it eardrum. eardrum okay here we go now you need to know that from the pinna to the tympanic membrane is known as our outer ear okay your outer ear is made up of your pinna auditory canal <coughs> and tympanic membrane. Okay, and what is being processed here are sound waves. So what we're going to do is you're gonna take, I'm gonna use pink because I want to. Your outer ear is going to be marked pink because you need to know what is your outer, your middle, and your inner ear. So for me, we are going to color in all of our outer ear pink. So my pinna is going to be pink. My ear canal is going to be pink. And my tympanic membrane is going to be pink. So I'm just gonna color in everything nice and pink. So it is very clear that they are all considered part of my outer ear. So when we talk about your outer ear, it is everything that you can physically touch. You can touch your tympanic membrane. I wouldn't. 
Yeah, because you'll shatter it and you'll lose the ability to hear. So, like, just because you can doesn't mean you should. So don't go home and say, oh, Miss Bennett said I could touch it. And you touch it and now you're deaf and your parents are suing me for millions of dollars. They're not going to get it because I'm poor. But don't do it. So your tympanic membrane is receiving sound waves. So the sound of my voice is making air follicles vibrate and they are coming for you. Your pinna is funneling them into your auditory canal and those sound waves which are making physical movement are vibrating the drum. Okay? So the sound waves are going into your ear auditory canal and are hitting the drum and are vibrating the drum. So right now it's going really fast because I'm talking really loud. And right now it's going really softly because I'm talking softly. I just controlled your tympanic membrane. Anyway, so your tympanic membrane literally shakes because of sound waves hitting it. So on your other side of your tympanic membrane, you have three of the smallest bones in your body. They are known as your osseles. They are known as your osseles. It goes anvil, hammer, stirrup. These are the three smallest bones in your body, and they happen to make up something called your middle ear. Now, right here, which we're going to draw an arrow to. I just call this the one. Stirrup, like a stirrup, S-T-I-R-R-U-P. Hammer. Hammer. What's wrong with anvil? No, Osseles, O S S I C L E S. Okay, stir up. Now you people got me really self conscious. <laughs> I've already admitted I had mistakes today, aka candy. Now you're making me feel uncomfortable. All right. Oh, I get I. <laughs> my best friend sent me my favorite ice cream. Yeah, you said you were being healthy. Because yeah, that obviously went out the window. I forgot about that until just now. I heard there was a candy in my mailbox, and I went there, and there was a bag of candy. I couldn't help myself. Okay, so you have your tympanic membrane. Then you have your osseles, which goes anvil, hammer, stirrup. And then you have right here, which we call the oval window. Why do you think it's called the oval window? It's oval. There you go. So the oval window is going to be the connection between... Uh, your middle to your inner ear. Now, your middle ear. Sorry. Your middle <laughs> ear is your tympanic membrane. It's in both because it's the overlap. Because it's not like a clean break. They overlap because they're bumping into each other. Osseles and oval window. So your middle ear is made up your tympanic membrane, your osseles, and your oval window. And this is all functioning off of physical creation of sound. Okay, so what happens is right now all the airwaves are vibrating and that's how you're hearing my voice. It gets funneled in by your pinna and then it hits the tympanic membrane and the tympanic membrane literally starts, uh, starts vibrating just like a drum. When you hit a drum, it's because you're hitting the surface and it makes a sound. It's exactly what's happening. On the other side of the tympanic membrane, so it's vibrating, it has these small little bones that are moving every single time the sound waves hit your tympanic membrane. So you're taking sound waves and converting them into physical movement. So all of these um, small bones start moving and they are yanking and pulling on the oval window, which is pretty cool. So for me, we're going to make the middle ear blue. Oh, this pretty color, it's pretty blue. So your middle ear is going to be colored blue and it's of course made up of your tympanic membrane, your osseles, and it makes physical recreation uh, creation of sound. So we're going to color your tympanic membrane again. And we're going to color in 
your Ossilies. So I'm going to just make sure we color these as well. They all fit there. So your tympanic membrane vibrates and then a bunch of bones start moving because of that vibration and they're going to start this yanking, pulling, pushing, yank, push, yank, push motion on the oval window. Now, the oval window is connected to the cochlea, which I'm going to, uh, which we'll label right here. This is your cochlea. C-O-C-H-L-E-A. Your cochlea is mucus filled. It is filled with a liquid. This is where transduction occurs. Transduction occurs. And we're going to talk about what transduction is in a moment. But you need to know this is where transduction occurs. Sorry. The cochlea. It is mucus filled. This is where transduction occurs in the basilar membrane. And I'm going to explain all of this just in a second, but I need you to write that down first. So, your sound goes in, funneled in by your pinna to your auditory canal and hits your tympanic membrane. Once it hits your tympanic membrane, it takes a sound wave and converts it into a physical motion. Once it makes a physical motion, it now creates a physical movement with the ossules are now yanking and pulling. So the ossules are now yanking and pulling on the oval window. Every time the uh, uh, oval window, the stirrup pushes in, what happens to the mucus? The mucus gets pushed in. Every time it pulls back from the oval window, what happens to the mucus? It fills back in. So what is moving the mucus? The ossules, the pressure on the oval window is what is moving the mucus inside the cochlea. So it goes from air waves, sound waves, to physical movement, to a liquid movement. That is how your brain is processing these neural impulses. It goes from sound wave to physical motion into moving of mucus, and that is how you hear things. Isn't that crazy? That's so cool. All right. So, let's talk about inside the cochlea. So, we're going to write, we're going to draw a little box down here, put it where I have it, make it as big as it needs to, about mine, please. Mimic it as close as you can because we have a lot of information we need to have. On top of your box, you're going to write inside the cochlea. Okay. Okay. So inside the cochlea, which is this snail-looking thing, okay, you have cilia. What is another word for cilia? Hairs. hairs. Yeah, you have little hairs. We're going to label it cilia. Okay, they're just little hairs that go into the membrane. Okay. And around your hair, you have mucus. And I'm going to take green and I'm going to color it in because when I think mucus, I think green. Okay, so I'm going to label this mucus. So every single time the mucus moves, okay, so remember, the stirrup is attached to the oval window, and every time the stirrup pushes in, where does the mucus move? Inward. Every time the stirrup pulls backwards, the mucus goes back to where it is, correct? So every time, we're going to point an arrow, every time the mucus moves, A neural impulse is created. Okay? So this is how you actually get a neural impulse to be created. It's not the actual sound waves, because the sound waves can't make it a neural impulse. This, like if I open up the skull of your brain and start shouting at your brain, can your brain process it? No, because your brain can only process neural Im uh, impulses. So by 
Having the sound waves come through your ear canal, hit the tympanic membrane and vibrate. That vibration is going to cause the movement of the ocelles, the small bones. That's going to cause a pull-push thing on the oval window. And that is going to cause neural impulses. So off the bottom, it's going to send, I'm going to make them blue because you can't see yellow. That's going to send neural impulses from the mucus, from the cilia into the brain. So these are neural impulses. Neural impulses. And this right here, where this is all happening, is the basilar membrane. The basilar membrane is the inner layers inside the cochlea. Okay, and this is where transduction occurs. Transduction, which we're going to define in two seconds, a section, sec, oh my God, two seconds is going to occur. Okay, so inside your cochlea, you have mucus and cilia on the basilar membrane. Every time the cilia moves one direction, it sends a neural impulse. Every time it goes another direction, it sends another impulse. And that is how we have sound waves. So at the very bottom, you're going to write transduction. Transduction <coughs> is when an external stimuli is converted into a neural impulse that can be processed by your brain. Transduction is the word of this week and next week, to be quite honest. So transduction is when an external stimuli, in this case, what is that external stimuli? Sound. Yeah, it takes an external stimuli and converts it into a neural impulse that can be processed by your brain. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So that's how you hear. It's my thing called the cochlea, which moves mucus around. So you're hearing me because mucus is a moving. Kind of gross. It's pretty cool though. All right, so we need to recognize what is in our inner ear. So we're going to write inner ear. Your inner ear is the oval window. And your cochlea. And inside your cochlea, you have the basilar membrane, which is where transduction occurs. We're going to write that. Transduction occurs. There you go. And then the next step is your auditory nerve, which we're going to label here in a second. So your inner ear has three stages. It goes oval window, cochlea, which has the basilar membrane, which you need to know, and then it has your auditory nerve. We're going to label the auditory nerve right now. It's this right here auditory nerve and your auditory nerve connects to what lobe people temporal. temporal it's connected to your temporal lobe okay so we are going to color in our inner ear it's going to be yellow okay and you need to know there's an oval window a cochlea and an auditory I'm just going to put it in a box to make it sure you don't forget about the auditory nerve and it is all of this, which you can't really see. <laughs> so I'm going to loosely color it. So this is your cochlea. This is your inner ear cochlea to your auditory nerve. Okay? So you also need to uh, identify these. These are your semicircular canal, uh, your semicircular canals. Does anyone know what your semicircular canals do? No idea. Okay. Anyone ever have an ear infection? 
Yes? Okay. What happens when you have an ear infection? It really, really hurts, but doesn't it feel like one side of your head is heavier? Yeah, it does. You kind of feel like you're walking around like sideways, like, oh, man. Okay, the reason why is because you have an ear infection, and it typically is right around in this area by your semicircular canals. Your semicircular canals is your balance. It's your balance. There's like one air bubble in your semicircular canals, and as it shifts and moves up and down the semicircular canals, that's how you know if you're, like, st steady or if you're unsteady, and that's what regulates if you're doing well or not doing well. So people who have bad balance and who can't like walk straight, and there are people in the world who are like that, that your semicircular canals are like dented or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's what it, balance, it deals with all of your balance. So if you ever have like an ear infection, or if you ever have like something in your ear, have you ever like worn really heavy earrings? And like you take them off and you're like, oh my God, I'm so light now. Yeah? Um, that's because you were so close to your semicircular canal. Which is pretty cool. No? Yeah, you guys are awesome to teach today. I'm really enjoying this so much. Okay, so your ear functions go from the pinna to the auditory canal to the tympanic membrane where it vibrates. That vibration is going to create a physical movement of the osles. The osles is going to pull and push on your cochlea, which is going to move the mucus, which is then going to trigger the cilia on the basilar membrane to send the signal of the neural impulse to your brain. You need to know how this works, so why don't we write this down then? How, a neuro, how the neural impulse is created. So, first step, pinna. Second step, auditory canal. Third step is your tympanic membrane. Just to make sure, I am going to draw a pink line and I'm going to write outer ear because I can. Then I'm going to take my pretty blue color and I'm going to draw a line, and I'm going to start with middle ear. And on the other side, you have your osles. Oh, it would be better if I was closer. Osles, which goes anvil, hammer, stirrup. Then I have my oval window. Then I'm going to draw a yellow line because now I'm in my inner ear. And in my inner ear, it goes cochlea. You're right over there. And then your cochlea goes to your basilar membrane. What's what happens when you put all your stuff away? And then you did, I saw it. Transduction. You put it back in the box. I saw you, girl. <laughs> this is where transduction occurs. Once it's been converted into a neural impulse, then it goes to your auditory nerve. Your auditory nerve is then going to carry it to your temporal lobe, then it's going to be processed by your auditory cortex. Pretty cool. And that is how you're hearing me talk now. Don't you think that's cool? Yes. Thank you, Emerson. Pretty cool. No, we're not done. I think I'm going to start the eye. <laughs> yes. I, I know, but I, I, you aren't even talking to me. You aren't even talking to me, people. So we're going to start the I. What? Um, At least the sophomores are talking to me today. I was What's up, Ms. Bennett? We'll talk to you right now. Nope. I, no. have, well, I have a question. Sorry. What? Um. <laughs> 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 
Okay, so that is your ear. Is it tympanic membrane power of the outer or middle? Both. It's okay. the end of the outer and the start of the middle. Okay. What do you got? Um, can I just see real quick the semicircular It's the loopy things. Just the part where it says. Semicircular it's balance. now balance. Is that it? That's all you need to know for it. And where does the mucus come from? I don't know. You were born with it, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, what do you think you got for your boogers, man? What? What makes your ears pop is because they're... I see what you people are doing. Hold on. No, no, no. So your ears pop. When you get into, like, a plane and something, uh, plane or something like that, there are two ways. Like, this goes to your throat, by the way. That goes to your throat. It's the drainage for that part of your ear. Why? Like, have you ever had, like, a, like you've had, like, a cold or something and you've had stuff running down the back of your throat? It's drainage from, like, your ears and stuff. So when you, the pressure inside this part of your ear is really important so the bones can move and work efficiently. What happens is when your ears out here change in atmosphere, it's a very slow process for these to change in here. And so when you hear that popping noise... It's literally your oscillies popping back into place because they're little bones and the air pressure can push them out of place. It's a no, 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 no. Water, because there's a tympanic membrane. It's a, and it's a closed thing. It just means you get water stuck right here and it can cause major problems. And why? Can you yawn? Yes, because you've changed the atmosphere in this place, and which is what causes the clogged ear. What causes a clogged ear? All of a sudden, you people are real fascinated. I've got my diagram ready to go. What do you mean? What causes a clogged ear? When your ears clogged. What? What? When have your ears like with wax? The reason why you have earwax is to keep your tympanic membrane like soft and pliable and mo like have moisture on it. Because if you dry it out too much, it will crack, which means it no longer functions and you will go deaf. So by having wax on it, it protects it as well as provides moisture, which keeps it vibrating and working well. Some people have an overproduction of wax in their ear. My husband is one. It's so gross. It really is. He, like, makes candles. That's what we joke about. It's so gross. It is. Like, it's normal, I guess. But um, his overproduction actually inhibits his eardrum from working as, uh, his tympanic membrane from working as efficiently as it should. Sometimes you can't really hear anything. I'm like, idiot. Clean your damn ears. What, Charles? What's this? That's the song. Oh, that's just, like, your skull. That's skin. That's a skull. That's not how you spell skull. That's how you spell skull. And then these would be, that would be right here. That would be like your sinus, if you care. You don't have to write that, but you can. What do you got? Oh, so when you're sick and you can't, well, like, you know that feeling when you can't really hear out your ear? Is that just like an over, like, like is that all mucus? Yeah, it's because like mucus gets caught in here and that's what causes that congestion. Why do people blow through your nose? It clears because you're holding your nose, your nose, ear, and throat are all connected, which is why you go to ear, nose, and throat doctors. They're all connected behind, like, for instance, if you hold your nose and try talking, you can feel pressure behind your eardrums, and it's because you're shifting the atmosphere that's located in between your ears, which is affecting your oscillies, and which is affecting the way, the reason why I sound so strange, like, do it. Turn to your neighbor and say say something to your neighbor holding, and you'll feel your oscillies kind of moving. Do it. You're not too cool. Turn and talk to someone. Jessica would love to talk to you with you holding your nose. You can't feel the pressure that's, like, growing behind your ears? Then keep talking more. Since when are you quiet? What? So if someone's deaf, deaf, does their... So there are two major reasons that cause a deaf, uh, why people are deaf. Okay. Um, it depends. They're either their tympanic membrane slash oscillies do not function correctly or their cochlea does not work. Have you ever heard of a cochlean implant? 
It's when they have something built in. That's because their cochlea, the mucus, is not moving the cilia effectively, which is why they have a cochlea implant to do the moving and the picking up of the stimulus. Essentially, what a cochlea implant does, and the barius barius luminum, it adds uh, electrical pulses to make it move more efficiently. So it just echoes. It makes it louder, all of the impulse that is coming from the oscillates. It just makes it louder to push it, the mucus, faster. If it is here, uh, when you have your tympanic membrane isn't working or your oscillates isn't working, it's called a conductive deafness, which means your body just doesn't have it developed. And there's really not much we can do except for trying to increase the sound waves that are hitting to hopefully increase the movement of the bone. So the louder the sound is, hopefully the tympanic membrane shifts bigger, which is why people who have a conductive have ear um, have hearing aids, which just essentially make the noise louder so to try to make the muscle, the bones move. So as you get older, do they deteriorate? Yes. Like, Especially, like, so if you listen to really loud music in your headphones, like, it's not like an old wives' tale, like, oh my god, that's going to hurt your hearing. It's because you're, you're literally grinding down these bones. Because the louder the sound is, the harder the bones shift, which makes sense. So you're like gear, like these bones are just rubbing against each other. So eventually, what's going to happen is these bones are going to take only loud noises can they process. So soft noise, like normal communication, like, hey, how was your day? It doesn't move the tympanic, it doesn't move the oscillates as much, and you, you turn into hard of hearing. So like listening to your music too much is wearing down your bones, like too loud of music. I'm not saying listening to music is hurting your bones, but listening to too loud of music is literally wearing down your bones. Yeah. No, it's not. What? Your bones are just like, this sucks. And they're so overworked. That's why everything's on like a draw. Because your bones have to recuperate. It's just like if you run like 10 miles today and you're not used to running 10 miles, your bones are like, nah, we're not doing anything for like a week. You know how the muscles are super sore? There's little muscles that hold them in, the bones in place. They're not just like three bones that smack together. They have like ligaments that are holding them together. And like your ligaments and your muscles that move the bones are like, nah, we're done. And they're just recovering, which is why you have that stagnant sound in your ears after a concert. It's because your muscles are saying, screw this, man, we're taking a break. Because you, you work them too hard. What? Can you what? I don't know how to respond. <laughs> Flip it! We're moving! Four minutes is great. We can start. Cornea! What? What? Um, Kobe's a dick. I hate him. Um, he's going to the vet today. Everything sucks. No, he didn't bite anyone. I hate every single one of you. <laughs> Toby, last night, we went to bed at like 10.30, and at 11.30, he started panting, like, <laughs> and like walking around the room with his claws, and it was clicking on the floor. So I got up at 11.30, let him go get water, came back to bed, and Toby passed out again. And then at 2.30, he woke up again and went <laughs> in everyone's face, walking around the room. And then I got up to go get water, and I was pissed. I was pissed. Because, like, I need sleep. And I don't sleep that much anyway, so it's vital. And I locked him out of the room, so he obviously cried for an hour. Ugh. Anyway, um, and then... I let him in again at like 4.30 for 20 minutes because my alarm goes off at 4.50 no matter what. And he is a jerk. So there's something wrong. So we're taking... McCray's actually at the vet right now with him. Yeah, he has a 2.30 appointment. He better be at the vet. <laughs> Cornea, clear. In quotes, glass-like. So Toby sucks. I wanted to kill him this morning. Glass-like lair. Over... Your iris and pupil. It's the only external part of your eye.
So, ladies and gentlemen, if you wear contacts, you touch your cornea all the time. If you wanted to, you could lick your th uh, finger. I would lick your finger first. Don't just smack it in there. And you can touch your cornea right now, and you can go like, Woo. I mean, it's not like the greatest thing, but if you've never touched your cornea, you can totally do it. Why is that weird? It's yours. It belongs to you. Oh, my God. All right, next thing is the pupil. It is a hole. You need to know your pupil is a hole in your iris. <coughs> in your iris that allows light to enter your eye. There you go. So it's literally a hole. What I want you to do, this is going to get intimate, is what I'm saying. I want you to turn to your neighbor, and I want you to look at them in their eyes, and I want you to look at their pupil. Do it now. Go. Go. Look at their pupil. I'll even turn on the lights so you can see. Over there. Look at each other. Look at each other. Maggie, let me see your pupil. Oh, really pretty ones. There you go. Very nice. Goodbye. You people are the worst. <laughs> Thank you, Connor. I take that as in high regard or low regard. I know. I'm so excited. It's blueberry pie ice cream from Graders. You can't get it unless it's in Ohio. So my girl's sending it to me. Like to enter? Huh? I didn't get the last one. Oh, we'll get it tomorrow.